there, welcome back guys. In today's video, we're going to be going over the steps I needed to take to unclog my nozzle to my Ender 3 S1 Pro and make some other tweaks to it after I had a, what do they call it, um, blob clog. And sometimes it could be your, your printer, sometimes it could be the G-code file. I noticed some G-code files, um, you know, as I mentioned before, print like this, crappy and other g-code files um, print beautifully like this g-code file printed beautifully but um everyone's having a different experience with it but thankfully it didn't clog my printer but there was one particular one no matter how many times i try will clog my printer but that being said it was this particular file not this one but another different file that i was trying to print and of course it clogged the printer and it created a blob clog and um well I guess, uh, why don't I just take you guys for the experience and uh, nightmare slash troubleshooting technique. But as you can hear, the printer's going in the background um, and things are back to normal. I found a different file. Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys in the end what, what, what actually prints. But um, all in all, come, let's uh, see what happened when I had to fix this uh, thing and which you might have to do too. So remember, um, not every solution is going to be the same. It's kind of like a 31 flavor solution where you have to sort of cherry pick and pick which one is right for you. But at least um, after watching this video, you'll see many different variations um, of solutions that you can look for when uh, your prints go haywire or when you have a blob clog um, or when things just are not happening uh, the way they should after like you've had marathon prints you know i printed over 50 to 60 things and you know there have been some not every print has been um, streamlined but some prints are yay and some prints are nay but um you know i reached a point where uh, which you will reach that point too where your prints are your, your machine's going to require a big overhaul maintenance and you just have to know what to do uh, and if you don't, you know, watch this video, it'll help you, um, you know, and, and if you come, if there's anything I miss that, um, you know, share it too, because I, I'd like to know, because um, as you know, I may think I covered all the steps, but uh, maybe there's something I miss the next time I have this same issue. Uh, maybe it's not the clogged nozzle. Maybe it's not the extruder. Maybe it's not the bed. Maybe it's not the little, um, you know, twirly thingies. Maybe it's not the belt. Maybe it's not the cable. Maybe it's not, you know, so many different things. Maybe it's not the G-code file. Maybe it is the G-code file. Anyway, th the list goes on. And as you can see, <laughs> my list basically um, hap had happened to me. So hopefully it doesn't happen to you and you won't experience this, but let's have a look. Let's go see. I'll bring you back to the time when this thing was a nightmare. Come. All right, so after you've removed all the screws from the extruder, there are five screws exactly, and just keep them in the tray, okay? And after you remove them, you just lift it up gently. Okay, remember, keep the screws in the tray. Otherwise, um, you'll go crazy looking for them. And what you wanna do is you wanna unplug it, and after you unplug it, you just lift it up, pull it out, Okay, and you see I have this little key here. I'll leave a link to this in the description. It comes with two, um, and there are four sides all together, but it's a matter of finding which one that actually fits it, right? Because I, I apparently there are different size nozzles, and once you find the one that fits it, you turn it, you know, so that it just comes right off. You just hold it. Remember, it's, it might be still hot, and then once you, if you look in between here, right, you can see I have um, some filament coming out of the gaps in there, so it's a pretty bad clog if it's dripping from the inside and under. And there you go, I managed to get it off. Look at that. See, it's coming off. It was, a hot, it was hard and hot at the same time. Remember, this thing is hot, okay? Like really hot, so hot that I've burnt myself many times. Not burnt where, you know, you have to go to the ER, but it's hot and you need a cloth. So I put the cloth underneath there. Just don't do what I did, which was almost get it caught, um, you know, with the line. Uh, you know, you just wanna clear it. And then just um, what I'm doing right now is increasing the temperature so that it warms up so that whatever is in there can be cleaned as it melts and, you know, just be hot and ready to go. Okay. So the nozzle, I increase the nozzle temperature to exactly 205. All right. You could do the bed too, if you like, but most likely it'll do both. Um, and so now this is the tricky part right here, just getting it set in your hands and on the table, because you want to make sure that when you pull it out, that it doesn't hit the plastic fan. 
because uh, for some reason the the plastic cables are so strong and taut that they want to go in the direction of the fan so be careful with that use the key that comes with it but you're gonna have to you need an additional allen key i'm not sure if mine didn't come with one but it came with two but i had to use a uh, a different allen key for the um, screw in the middle uh, which I didn't have so you move the two on the side see that's one this is the second one and when you remove it it's not gonna pop out right away you're gonna have to um, you know if they're hot see I just burnt myself right there it's like ah so just use have a pliers ready and just leave it on the um, cloth and then there's another one right there in the middle you see that and unfortunately, as you can see, I thought they were all universal, but they weren't. And I thought maybe it would be within the set, um, but that key wasn't in the set. And I thought, hey, maybe this one. Nope, not that one. Hey, maybe that one. Nope, unfortunately, not that one either. Um, so, you know, and then I was like, hey, maybe this key. I keep trying all these different keys and not one of them work. Because you would think, but by default, the manufacturer would have sent, you know, all the keys needed to take this thing apart and service it yourself. So I found one from one of my bicycle sets and was able to just you know it worked it worked really well um and now that when you unscrew it this little black screw see it's right there at the head of the allen key and use your pliers because this is really hot i can't express like you know how many times i was like ah ooh, ah 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 ooh, you know like it's like you know that's what you'll be doing if you're not careful and even if you are careful you know things and you have to pull it out see how hard it was to pull out that's how much um uh, yeah, filament was was clogged in there I don't know how this happened. Um, I was printing something and then it jammed and then I guess everything just got backed up. Um, so then once, you know, you see, you can see it sticking out from over there. It was just, it, when it was coming out from the sides too, even though this thing was hard to get out, I guess, you know, the liquid goo just was coming out all over. And see how I'm trying to move it? You want to keep it away from the fan again, because it's still hot and you don't want to ruin that fan. See, look at that. I got one piece in there. Um, and then I got another piece a little, it's all over in there and it's all over on the outside too which is really mind-boggling how the filament can you know drip out from and start coming out from underneath which is a little bit of a bummer but you know you just gotta you be prepared to service them so now i'm just cleaning it you want to clean it out so it has a little cloth with alcohol on it just getting all the remnants off because you know there's not supposed to be any filament in there uh, on the sides or oozing out so you know just cleaning it and after you clean it you're good to go uh, remember use your pliers remember clean it really well it should, it should be shining metal not shining with remnants of filament okay can't express that anymore but you want to do ah there i just almost burnt myself right there um and then you just squeeze it in you want to be careful you know you don't want to uh, cosmetically damage it so you know just use your pliers to push it in and once it's pushed in see how it's not straight um, but I'm gonna put the black screw right in the center first but remember don't tighten it because this actually sets it in a particular direction that you don't want it in so you want to tighten it after so I'm just putting it in so I can just seat it you know and then I'll um, after I tighten the other two screws um, which are holding it together then I will tighten the one in the middle, if that makes any sense. So you're gonna do one on one side, okay? And then you're gonna do one on the other. See, I'm now going to do this one. And then, uh, yeah, it's almost there. Just making sure it's tight enough. And now you do the one in the middle because it's gonna hold it in place so that it's centered. Because remember, they're, they're lined up now. At first it wasn't straight until the screws are in the hole, okay? and voila so the ones the one in the middle is tightened you know just tight enough to be tightened i don't have to over tighten it and look at that managed to put it back together this whole process the cleaning pro it takes a bit of time you know if, if you have a clog so here i am thinking like hey maybe i'll just polish the brush the the, the nozzle and i'm like you know what forget it i'm just gonna put a new one on because uh after all this work if you're gonna do this don't don't recycle the nozzle i mean just it just makes total sense to put a new one on it, especially since this one actually caused it. So I'm just gonna seat it into the little, you know, wrench thingy. And this is a new nozzle, remember? Because after all that, I'm not taking this thing apart again. Um, and it comes with a spare. So once you use your spare, just order a new set. I'll leave a link to that in the description too, so you guys know, uh, you know, which ones to order. And I just ordered the stock version, which is the one that actually comes with it. And then you get a few in a set, look at that. Let it turn, turn it so that's really tight. You want it, you want it to be as tight as it was 
uh, when you were trying to unscrew it. You know, just put that much power into it. And this is a little silicone thingy that like absorbs the heat. And you want to check this from time to time because um, sometimes your I'm just cleaning it off with alcohol. Sometimes your clog can build up underneath there. So always check underneath the silicone thing. And you can take it off without taking it apart. It just comes off. And you see the remnants on my hand. So if you have any remnants of uh, filament on your hand, wipe it. So you don't, you know, cross contaminate any of the parts. And here you just put, putting it back on. It slides right, right in. See, look at that. It should pop back in on the on the side. It's a little tricky to get in if you haven't done it in a while. But you know, it just seeds right in. And you just hold one end, right? And I'll just move the camera so you guys can get a better angle of it. Um, and you know, it's a little bit tricky, uh, but you'll do it. Remember, there are five screws. Even though I put four in, I just waited a little bit because I just wanted to make sure I didn't have to take this thing apart again. So remember five, that's two. This is the second one going in, okay? Really easy to turn back in. Th three, this is the third one, okay? And they're really easy, they, they just easily go in. This is the fourth one. And again, they're really easy to turn back in. You don't need any special tool except the ones that came with it. This is the one I used um, for my bicycle because there was no key to fit the one in the middle. And for the X, just get rid of the old nozzle. See, this is the old one. You can keep it for memories um, to remember your first tune-up or just throw it out. And there we are. See, it's put back together, but not as good as you think. Um, I figured, let me just uh, check and see everything, uh, see if the board's level. The board's not leveled. You want to watch the video where I level the board, um, but you know, before leveling it, uh, you want to clean everything. You want to wipe, because it could be remnants of old prints on there, and when you're leveling, it has to be clear. And then just touch all over, like touch, make sure there are no moving parts. Make sure, you know, your, your extruder's fine, the levers are fine, uh, like this one right here. This one is, I don't know how this happened, but um, this one's super tight. This one's a little bit loose. And I had emailed someone on the forum. They said it's because, you know, things wear and tear and sometimes parts just get out of whack from printing, especially ever after 200 hours. So now I'm like, damn, now there's something, I have to um, fix these things over here because one is loose, right? And then one is tight. And if you, I remember I've got over 200 hours of prints in here. Um, so watch this one right here. So this one is so loose that you'll see um, how, how how much it turns so i'm just trying to find the right key because even though uh, it comes with these tools it didn't come with this one and i'll leave a link to this one in the description because um as you can see this one fits on one side right and then one fits on the other and i'll watch how much this turns that's how let's look at that from the rear the silver one that's how loose it, it had gotten uh how i don't know but if you watch my um video where I'm assembling this, everything was good to go. So it could have been this that threw the prints out of whack, right? And then causing the, the uh, thing to jam and the nozzle to go off and things to go just sideways. You know, you never know. So it could be the, the G-code file. It could be your nozzle. It could be the bed. Or it could be these things right here. So all these things come into play when you get a clog. Um, but it could be just one thing. But as you can see, for me, it's a combination of all these different uh, variables that cause everything. And here I am. This is a filament. I don't know. For some reason, toward, as I got towards the end, the filament felt different, really weird, brittly and strange. So I was like, you know what? Let me get rid of it and then just load a new one in. And thankfully, it only happened during you know the, the first part of the experience. And here we are. So I'm going to change this um, filament here. But the filament's going to be changed in part two of this video uh so we're actually going to change it to yellow since the gray one uh just wasn't the right temperature but remember um watch part two where i'll show you how to load the, the filament and that's pretty much it and good luck with your next printing that's pretty much it i hope that you know you learned something from here um, and this video will help you moving forward when you start to troubleshoot your printing machine. Hopefully you'll just have to change the nozzle and one and done. But you know, if there are other issues, you know, you just have to grasp everything and feel it. And hopefully you don't have to take the extruder apart. So even though I only had to take the nozzle apart and the heat, you know, heat part of it, but you know, there's more to it and where you would have to maybe um, take the whole thing apart, but hopefully not because a lot of it can be accessed from, you know, just taking that those pieces off that I showed you. Anyway, 
If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below or ideas for other videos. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.